Yo, what's going on everyone, Expert Fusion here, and the Black Ops Cold War Alpha is, of course, finished, and I decided I would make a video compiling everything bad about Black Ops Cold War's multiplayer so far from the alpha build we got to play. Now, I was going to make a video going over the good and the bad, but I realized there's a lot of good with this game, and I mean a lot of good. I really do enjoy this multiplayer experience. I would honestly probably give it like an 8 or a 9 out of 10 so far just from the alpha alone. I really really enjoyed it. I already made a video talking about that in, you know, in detail, going over my first impressions and such, but now we've played, of course, about two days of it, give or take, and, well, not obviously exactly two days. I probably personally put about 12 or so hours into it, so I've got a pretty good understanding of what this game is all about. Now, the things I'm going to name in this video are going to be things that can change with the game, meaning this is constructive criticism. What I think the devs should change this is for them. That's what these alphas and betas are for. They're so they can test what we want as consumers. And of course, this is my opinion. There might be things in here that you personally think is fine and should be left the way it is. And there might be things that you also think should be changed on top of this, but I personally might not agree with that. And that's completely okay. These things can be changed. It's no point of, you know, complaining about things that aren't going to be changed like certainly aren't going to be changed but there are some things that are unlikely to be changed but i still might mention that because it's still always good to mention everything you disliked about it of course if it's a valid reason there's no reason to hate with the, on the dev there's no reason to harass them on twitter i know a lot of people are doing that there's no reason for that but you could should give your constructive criticism even if it's something like wanting skill-based matchmaking reduced or removed in some way shape or form but I'm going to be going through everything. There's some minor things in here and there's some major things in here. But honestly, none of it ruins the experience to a massive extent because I'm really liking this game so far. First things first, I want to just get this out of the way. Of course, it's an alpha, so there were a lot of bugs, glitches, and such within the alpha that definitely need to be changed for the full game and fixed, and I'm sure they will be. I'm not going to go in detail naming every single little bug and glitch I came across because, I'll be honest, I came across a lot. You know, the servers were a little rough as well. There's a lot of frame drops every now and then. That's to be expected in an alpha build of the game. This is earlier than what you know they have working on in their studio right now. They're probably working on the beta build of the game right now. This alpha build is probably like two or three months old, honestly. I wouldn't be surprised. So I think our complaints, need to, we need to understand that they have a lot of time to fix these problems. Therefore, we should give it to them as soon as possible so they can get a great product out for us in November. But like I said, there are a lot of bugs and glitches that I hope can get fixed for the full game, and I'm sure they can even get fixed for the beta. That would be great. Graphics and animations aren't something I really care too much about. That's like one of the main complaints I've heard about this game, which you know the game's probably pretty good if the main complaint is graphics and animations, but I personally am fine with them, honestly. There are a lot of problems with the textures not loading in right away, which happened a lot in Black Ops 4 as well. It even happens in Modern Warfare sometimes, where the textures don't necessarily pop in right away, so you have to like wait a couple seconds and look at it, and then it'll load in, which is kind of annoying. I kind of hope they kind of fix that a little bit. I'm sure next-gen consoles will definitely fix that. But in terms of just the animations and graphics itself, I'm confused as to why so many people hate on it. I think it looks really good. I think the gun models don't look as clean and realistic as Modern Warfare for sure, and the animations aren't as realistic as Modern Warfare, but it's a video game. All I want is to look at least good, and then I'm happy. And it looks good. It looks solid. It looks clean. And I love the sounds. The gun sounds are pretty dope. They're not realistic, but it's, again, a video game. I don't want my ears to go deaf when I'm playing a damn video game. So I'm actually glad as to where the guns are in terms of sound. They all sound very different from one another as well. And I kind of like that. I also would like to get skill-based matchmaking out of the way because there was really no way to prove skill-based matchmaking was even in the alpha, but a lot of people have been saying it's likely there, and I'm sure it's going to be there in the full game. Of course, I want skill-based matchmaking reduced substantially. It's not going to be removed. It's been in every COD, but I do think it should be reduced to kind of how it was in Black Ops 4 or even before that. I don't like skill-based matchmaking. I don't think a lot of people do, so hopefully that is changed for the full game. I don't want to see it nearly as bad as it was in Modern Warfare. But let's get into the actual criticism. There's a couple minor things in here, like I said. First of all, these score streaks should show us the amount of score we need left to get that specific score streak. Now, the only way to tell how much score you need to get to a specific streak right now is by the little bar, as well as if you check your score on your scoreboard, it'll show how much score you have. And if you know how much score your specific streak is, you'll know how much more you need to it. But the problem with that is if you get the score streak once, 
well then now you have to start doing math in your head and it's just way too much math to you know keep track of you're not gonna remember exactly how much score you had when you earned your first uav so now you gotta keep track of it and be like okay oh, how much more do i need for the second uav i have no idea how much do i need how much even did this cost how much? you don't even know okay it'd be so much easier if the score streaks on the hud themselves had the number of the amount of score you need left for that streak so for example when you, the game first starts right above the chopper gun or maybe in you know any sort of a font doesn't really matter what it looks like it'll say 6,000 above the chopper gun or just on top of it or something next to left side of it or I, I don't know they could find a way to fit it in there have it say 600 and then when you get a kill well now you got 50 scores so now it would say uh, 59950 you know what I mean so like it, that that's what it would do and then the more kills you get you know it start lowering 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 when you earn it once then it'll pop back up to 6,000 after you uh, the, the cooldown finishes another thing i think the cooldowns need to be kind of changed a little bit for especially those streaks like the chopper gunner for stuff like uavs maybe because yes you're going to earn uavs a lot more often but chopper gunners i'm not going to earn many i'm probably going to earn one a game anyways i'm not going to earn much more than that so i i feel like the score streak system i i like but there's things about it I don't love, and I think that's one of the things, because earning a second chopper gunner isn't very easy because, especially if you're in a smaller game, because of the fact that that cooldown is pretty damn long. Now, earning one chopper gunner, I think might be too easy. Now, I don't know how they're gonna change this because honestly, I'm happy with this score streak system. I am. I originally was really worried about it. I thought it was gonna ruin the game, and then in practice, it's actually pretty cool. But there are problems about it. I get way too many chopper gunners. Shitty players aren't going to get them, of course. That's not a problem. But me personally, I've gotten way too many of them. I've gotten like 30 within the alpha alone. And it's just too easy. These usually aren't that easy to get in other CODs. But it does take away a lot of that frustration you have when dying off of a long kill streak, like in other games. But there also is just a little bit of frustration there, but it's not too much. So I definitely like the score streak system more than I don't. But I think there's things that can work around with them, maybe with the score values, maybe like, for example, getting you know denied kills i think that score needs to be a little bit higher in kill confirmed because you get like 15 score for a, a denied kill uh, like when you pick up a teammate tag like there's really no point in pick up teammates tags because you get like no score for it but like i said there's definitely some work to be done there i think the best thing would be to show our how much score we need for each score streak on the score streak itself that would be really useful i would love that when it comes to weapon balancing i actually feel like the weapon balancing in this game is already really damn good I talked about that in my top five guns video from Black Ops Cold Wars Alpha that I did earlier. But in terms of weapon balancing, they can definitely change around a few weapons, specifically the AK-74U needs a nerf, and I think snipers need a nerf. And I think they've already said they are gonna be nerfing the snipers, so that's a good thing. But in terms of the AK-74U, yeah, it needs a nerf. Everything else though, pretty much perfect. I honestly have almost no problem with the rest of the gun balancing within the game. I think teammates, their little name tags above their head need to be like, you know bolded or, or something they need to be less transparent because there's been way too many times where i've come around a corner and i just can't even tell it's a teammate i think it's an enemy because their name tag is so small it doesn't even look like they have a name tag they need to do something about that because it's been really frustrating i can't even tell when it's when a teammate or an enemy sometimes I, obviously if a split second goes by and you're like okay obviously it's a teammate now you can see the name but like it kind of just gets you especially when you're coming around a corner and you're not looking at the mini map it's kind of frustrating i hope they can possibly change that in some way the ninja perk needs a buff right now it doesn't even really work that well it doesn't really decrease your footstep sound at all at least on my end maybe on the enemy's end it does better but you can still hear your footsteps pretty clearly and i'm not a big fan of that i don't think it should completely take away the footstep sounds at all because i think it would be kind of a crutch perk at that point because of how loud the footsteps and how useful they are in this game but I think they should decrease it at least a little bit to make the perk at least useful because right now it's not even worth using. It doesn't even feel like Dead Silence is even in the game, like, li literally at all. Kill feed, it needs to be a little bit slower. Not too much slower, but just a little bit slower because right now it's, like, nearly impossible to hit quad feeds, which I think is good. I don't think it should be as easy to hit quad feeds as it is in Modern Warfare, but with a slower time to kill, it's already harder to hit quad feeds, so I think it would just be nicer if the kill feed was just a little bit slower and then it would be perfect in my opinion. Now when it comes to created class, I made a video about this before saying why I don't like this new created class system. This was before the alpha even happened, this was just after hearing about it from the multiplayer reveal, and I still stand by what I said. I still think there's a lot of work that needs to be done with this class system. Hopefully when they add more wild cards, which I assume the beta will have more wild cards, maybe it'll be a better system, but right now it just seems kind of weird. Like for example, Having eight, having eight attachments on a weapon is just a little too crazy. Everyone runs silencer because of that. Like, there's no reason not to have silencers in this game, especially because the negative attributes of silencers aren't really that big of a deal. So pretty much everyone runs silencers. 
and especially on secondaries like you especially with sock shotguns being secondaries you just have way too many attachments have way too often having six perks is like insane i think there's a way they can kind of make it so it's you know balanced while still allowing us to have a lot of customization between the classes i think there's definitely a way to do it and i kind of talked about it in that video and in terms of your weapons itself hopefully they can add something called like gunsmith weapon kits or something where you can make specific weapons with specific attachments like saved as a sort of weapon kit thing i don't know because it's really frustrating making a new class and have to go scroll down to five different attachments it takes way too long to make classes in this game because of the gunsmith and because of how many different options are this was a problem in modern warfare as well so hopefully they can add some sort of a weapon kits thing where you can like save your own builds of the weapons in there so you can just quickly you know find the m4 that you usually use for this and then put it there right away now the last bit of construction criticism I have is for the maps in this game. I love a lot of the maps. I think all the maps are actually pretty, uh, each, at least like decent or better. But specifically Miami, as well as the two combined arms maps, need to have some sort of a change done to them. I think Satellite and Moscow are pretty much perfect how they are. And a lot of people might be like, oh, they're not going to change maps. Well, they have before. Back in World War II, Aachen was actually changed after the beta, after a lot of people complained about that map. And they added some different lanes or some different part of the map. I don't know. They added something new to Aachen. I remember that. So they can change Miami. They can change these other maps. I think the best way to change Miami is just remove some of the back section of the map. Maybe cut it off for maps like, or modes like Team Deathmatch and Kill Confirmed. Modes that are definitely going to have, you know, it's going to be slower. It's going to be less hectic. You definitely want to make the map a little bit smaller just so it actually plays a little bit better and right now it's a little too slow it's a good map it just plays really slow because it's way too big for 6v6 either that or just make it like 8v8 but i don't really know how that would work in the playlist so maybe just yeah keep it so it's a 6v6 map but just kind of decrease the size of it a little bit so it actually plays well or just move up the spawn points even there's a lot of things they can do to make that map flow a little better because right now it's way too slow and for the combined arms maps there's definitely some work to be done on them in terms of maybe just making them 16v16 because 12v12 does not seem like enough on how big these maps are. I think Armada works pretty well for the most part because everyone kind of usually goes to that middle boat all the time. So there's usually a lot of action that's done there. I don't think it's terrible with 12v12, but Crossroads definitely does not work with 12v12, especially with the tanks. The tanks are just really frustrating and probably should have some sort of a nerf or something. And then I'd be happy with Crossroads, but as a whole, that's really all I have to complain about when it comes to Black Ops Cold War's multiplayer alpha. Of course, when we get the full game, there's going to be a lot more criticism to have because there'll be a lot more items in the game. Even when in the beta, there's going to be a lot more to critique because we're going to have a lot more items to work with, a lot more guns. Therefore, there's a lot more balancing issues that might, you know, come into place and that might have more critiques to bring up. We'll also have more maps. There might be more things to critique there. The campaign when the full game comes out and zombies and Warzone and how all that plays in. But just from this specific alpha, keeping in mind that it is an alpha, this is really all I have to complain about. I think the game is doing really well so far, and I'm really excited for this year. I'm just really worried how skill-based matchmaking. I think that's going to be the worst part about this entire game. I just hope it works out well and doesn't end up destroying the lobbies like it does in Modern Warfare and making me not want to touch the game like at all, practically. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.